A huge dog training myth is that as soon as your dog has learned a behavior, like sit for example, you no longer need to treat it. There is actually a much more methodical, strategic way that we phase out treats over time when we're dog training. So if you're interested in learning that strategy, keep watching. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health needs and on this channel, we break down scientific research in order to inform and educate us on how to train dogs. So if you're interested in a nerdier approach to canine cognition, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification so you get notified when I drop new videos. So there are actually a couple of techniques that you can use to phase out treats over time and which technique you use for your dog kind of depends on how much intrinsic reward is in the behavior. So there's intrinsic rewards and there's extrinsic rewards. Extrinsic rewards are treats and toys and things that your dog receives externally from the universe. Intrinsic reward is everything that is happening internally. So that is that dopamine kick, the oxytocin, the serotonin, all of those things that are happening within the dog that makes him just like doing it. And so what you kind of want to think about is if your dog has a high intrinsic reward, if the activity that he's doing has a high, high intrinsic value to him, then you can kind of get away with a lower extrinsic treat or food or whatever. But if the behavior has a kind of a lower intrinsic value and it's just kind of like meh to him, well, in that case, you're gonna need to give him a higher external reward. That thing that you give him is gonna have to be very motivating so that he wants to keep doing it. And of course, if there's very, very, very little intrinsic reward to it, perhaps you're training something that is scary and desensitizing a trigger or has something that's very challenging, if that intrinsic reward is pretty mild at the moment, you're gonna need to bump up the value of the extrinsic to make it very reinforcing. The first way to fade out food is to lower the value of treats. So we have talked a lot about on this channel and you can check out this video for more about it, about how we have high, medium, and low value treats. And so if, for example, you have been using high or a medium value treat to train a behavior, well, then you can decrease the value of the, of the food, maybe give him a less valuable food as his reward. So you're still feeding as frequently, but you're feeding a lower value treat. That's number one. The other way that you can look at this is to feed still with high value treats, but expect more behaviors from it. So for example, maybe instead of just getting one sit per treat, you get three, four, five sits per treat, or you get a sit stay per one treat. So you're getting more behavior for the same value, the same high value food that you were giving before. And finally, you can do something called intermittent reinforcement, which is basically randomized rewards. So you feed a varying degree of treats. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's medium, sometimes it's low, it's very randomized. Plus you may fluctuate the frequency at which you feed. So sometimes you feed every one treat or sometimes you feed every three treats. The caveat I wanna to give to this is that the more neurotic dogs um, or the more, um, I guess high drive dogs tend to not like that unpredictability. When we start doing intermittent rewards, that is a way to phase out treats, that's true, but you can actually end up hurting yourself if it's done to the wrong dog because they're going to be upset with the unpredictability of it and how randomized it is. So if that seems like your dog, don't do that method. <laughs> Now, of course, there are a bunch of other types of rewards that you can give your dog that are not food or treats. And so if you're interested in finding out more about that and how you can incorporate some of those other types of rewards into your dog's life, check out that video because it's going to help you tremendously. And again, you are constantly adjusting your extrinsic reward according to how valuable or how intrinsically rewarding the experience is for your dog. So you're looking for those happy taps. You're looking for how frequently your dog is coming back. How hard is it to engage your dog to participate in the experience or in the training process? The more intrinsically rewarding, the more self-motivated the dog is to work for you, the less you owe from an external perspective 
sort of. It depends on the difficulty of the challenge. And so you are thinking about all of these things when you are considering specifically what treat to deliver at what given moment. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash that like button to let the YouTube algorithm know. If you're interested in more dog training techniques for your anxiety or reactive dog, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. And don't forget to check out some of these videos right here and I'll see you guys next time.